let's talk about the newest member of the Ultimates, Charlie Ramsey, aka Hawkeye. This book is absolutely brilliant, as all of the Ultimates comics have been so far, but I can't tell you how like haunting and beautiful it is to open the book up and see these two quotes, respectively, from Crazy Horse and Teddy Roosevelt, and how it sets the stage for what comes later in this comic. This issue of Ultimates number 5 ultimately is about cowboys and Indians. All of this started because Tony Stark has been going around trying to rebuild the age of heroes that the Maker had stolen from their world. Part of that deal is finding heroes, locating them, and giving them every tool that they would possibly need to be who they were always meant to. For example, Tony Stark crafted a bunch of Stark Tech arrows and a suit for Clint Barton, who then took it and promptly threw it in the trash. But one man's trash is someone else's treasure. See, Clint Barton isn't the first hero that denied Tony's offer, but he is the first hero that threw his stuff away, and then it got picked up by someone else. Tony sends Steve, asking him to get the tech back because he doesn't want to be responsible for somebody getting injured. After all, they ran the numbers on Charlie, and they are in the bottom 10 percentile of potential heroism, and possibly could end up being a villain. Further to highlight the importance of the mission that he's sending Cap on, Tony explains to him that those arrows in the hands of the right person could wipe out an entire army single-handedly. Charlie has taken this suit and arrows and used it to completely decimate and wipe out a bunch of rocks on oil refineries and operations. Is more than willing to take those arrows, defend themselves, and the mission they've been using them for. As Charlie continues to fight, refusing to give up the arrows, they explain that Roxxon has ruined their lives. They flood the plains, they dig up their sacred ground, they poison their water supply, and when the Lakota people would try to stick up for themselves, try to protest, would kill them, throw them in jail, or force them off of their land. Charlie explains that this is their destiny. They had a vision. They saw a boy in the light and heard his message. Protect the innocent, save lives, inspire the citizens of this world to be the best versions of themselves. And while Cap tries to explain that that was not a vision, just a projection of Tony Stark talking to Clint Barton, Charlie tells Cap that they know that, but visions aren't about the messenger or even the message. It's about the person receiving them. Then Charlie tells Cap, I don't care if I have to dig my destiny out of a dumpster. It's still mine. Besides, while my government name may be Charlie Ramsey, my true name, my spirit name, is Charlie Hawk's Eyes. Their fight gets interrupted when all of a sudden a Roxxon cleanup crew arrives, which is a nice way of saying an army of mercenaries, which leaves the cowboy and Indian to now join sides and face an army of thousands together. Now Steve is more than impressed with what he's seen here today. He tells Charlie it's time for them to leave. Charlie is confused and asks if the fight's not going to continue, if Steve doesn't want the arrows back, but Steve explains he was never going to take the arrows back. He just wanted to be sure of who was keeping them before he went back and told Tony. As the two head out, Steve still has one burning question. He asks Charlie if their spirit name is really Charlie Hawk's eyes, to which Charlie laughs and responds, you white people will believe anything. I love that this book opened up with these two quotes, and I love what it did not only with Charlie, but with Captain America. Because to me, Captain America is at his best when he's being used to say something important about our country, addressing problems that we've had in our past, but also being draped in our flag, being able to show the best, most idealistic and aspirational aspects of what this country could be.